I want to show you how to protect visitors of your site from untrusted content. And when I say untrusted content, I mean any content and it entered by an untrusted user. So someone submitting the guest book, that's an untrusted user. Someone who stranger, even if they register and log into your site, that's an untrusted user. Okay, so if it's someone you trust and you put it in a role with privileges, that's a trusted user. So we have to be careful about content entered and then shown on our web pages from untrusted users. Even though we have this WYSIWYG editor here that kind of protects, limits what can be entered, it doesn't really protect. A person can disable JavaScript and that will be a raw text area and then they can post in JavaScript. They can do cross-site scripting attacks, can you know hijack, steal your cookies and send them to another server. Um, a lot of dangerous stuff, you know. We want a way to protect ourselves because we don't want stuff reflected here on our page that might grab our users' cookies and send it somewhere or do some other malicious thing with JavaScript. So there's a lot of approaches that people have used to protect against untrusted content. Some have done things where they filter the content at the time we capture it and then try to scrub it before it goes into the database. Um, but typically with HTML content, it's kind of complicated because you're allowing some markup and just not other markup, like script. And what happens if you try to scrub it on the front end is, you know, you might not have a perfect system and something gets past it and then it's in there. And then you're just uh, still putting it on the page and you got a more complicated process if you come up with a better filter now you've got to rescrub that data somehow so the other approach is to protect it on the way out go ahead and put it in the database as it's entered by the user but filter it on the way out so that no malicious content can be rendered in the page and that's the approach we're going to show today and we're going to be using neat html to accomplish the first thing i need to do is make sure we have a reference to neat html so i'm going to add a reference and I'm going to browse up to our lives folder. And it's brettle.web.neat.html. We set a reference to that. And we also, we, I believe we already have that in our web.config so that it would recognize uh, the tag because we copied it originally, as you may recall, from the Mojo Portal web.config. So we've already got a tag down here for brettle.web, the tag prefix need HTML. So we can use that tag prefix, and in theory, what we can do is just come in here to our repeater, oh wait, actually it's I may not be getting this right. I could copy it. Oh, I guess it is. In fact, maybe I should just copy it from another place in Mojo Portal where I know it exists, like the blog view control. And here's an example of it. And so basically, I'm just going to copy this into here. And then I'm going to close the tag after all of our stuff is entered there. And so we've got also a trusted image URL pattern, allow relative images. That way we can use the smileys. And then we tell it the path to the neat HTML JavaScript. And basically what happens is this will filter out anything bad um, that can happen. So, or it can be entered by users. Actually, maybe I should demonstrate how this could be uh, exploited. Okay, but going back to our page, suppose I do disable JavaScript. Well, I guess let me go in here. I think it would be a lot easier than this. Scripting disabled. Okay. This is just a temporary thing now. 
I refresh this page, that should mean that we don't have a WYSIWYG anymore. And I can just go So now it's not happening because JavaScript is still disabled. So now I'll just go back in. Enable active scripting. Refresh the page. And looky there. So this is an example of how uh, JavaScript can be used to try to steal your cookie and then they could maybe request an image from another site and pass this data as a query string parameter and then the other site could capture it and then someone could try to use your cookie to uh, see if they could authenticate to your site by appearing as if they were you, that kind of thing. This is just an example. So to prevent that and you'll note that that will happen every time I refresh the page now. Of course, a, a real hacker would not do something you would notice. He would do it behind the scenes. Now, going back to our um, untrusted content. Let's see, do I have an extra closing div here? It looks like it. Oh, I see. I should have closed this after this. And where's the start of that div? I think that is an extra bit of closing tag. So we'll get rid of that. And now we've got our neat HTML wrapper around this. So we'll build to redeploy. And then we go back to our browser and refresh the page. Oh, we've got a variable that wasn't declared. So we've got to go back to our code here. And we'll just declare that as a string. It must be protected string, not private, because otherwise the uh, code in front, the .scx, can't see it. And let's go back to our blog view. Must have that thing assigned somewhere. our browser again and this time we don't get the alert on the page see and we go uh, so we saw how you know disabling JavaScript can protect you from this too but most of the time you want JavaScript enabled to get the, the most out of the site but as developers we have to be very conscious of the power of JavaScript and how to prevent malicious JavaScript from being used on your site by untrusted users. Uh, thanks for this clip. We'll see you in the next one.